everyone see the screen of slides? If you can just like kind of wave since I've muted y'all. Okay, perfect. I see you waving. Awesome. <laughs> okay. So um, let me see. Hold on one second. Okay. All right. So um, as you know, it's myself, it's Amber, and it's Angela Hilliard in our office, and we run the elections uh, with help from you all. And that not just on election day, but throughout the election season, which we are very happy and appreciative about um, because it's not, it's a huge job and we couldn't do it by ourselves. So the upcoming election, it's the day after Labor Day. We're having lots of fun with that. Um, it's posing some issues, but we're dealing with them. And our objective in being there on election day is, to, is um, and our objective for you is to give you all the information you need to ensure that all the voters who come into the polling place receive the most efficient and courteous service possible. We wanna have the right answers for, the, for them and we wanna make sure that their voting experience is a positive one. So we've just had a change. Um, we have the same polling places with the exception of one of them. So precinct 1A, it was the North Zion Church. It is now changed to the North Amherst Library, which is a huge improvement. It's over on Montague Road. Um, that's its official address. But I just want to let you know, for those of you that are working at that location, that you enter the library parking lot from Sunderland Road, not Montague Road. I made that mistake the first time I went up there. There's actual no actual driveway um, that goes in on that side. So you have to go to Sunderland Road side. But it's a brand new facility. Um, I mean, it's, a, it's an add-on of an old facility, but the space is brand new. It has heat. It has air conditioning. It has uh, two bathrooms. It's got, um, oh gosh, I don't know. It just has everything, good lighting, all kinds of things. So those of you working there, you're going to be happy with that space. So the polling hours, as usual, starts uh, polls open at 7 a.m. and they close at 8 p.m. Those of you who are scheduled for the morning shift, we ask that you arrive one hour before the polls open because there's quite a lot of uh, work to be doing to do when you set up and you've got to be ready to open at seven. Um, feel free to bring food with you if you're working, you know, whatever you're working, if you need some food or drink, uh, you can take breaks as time allows. You will be given a name tag when you get to your polling place, and you should wear that while you're working. And just a reminder that you should not be talking politics while you're on duty, because um, as an election worker, you're there to facilitate voting for the voters, and you should not be influencing anybody around you in any way. So you're there to work. If you want to talk politics, you take your break. When you go have lunch or snack or whatever, you can talk to somebody away from the polling place. Treatment of voters, of course, it goes without saying, but we say it anyway, that all voters should be treated with respect, courtesy, and the same level of service. So here's a little breakdown of who does what. So um, you're all election workers. That's what this training is for. So your duties are going to be assigned by the warden. And we have two people at the check-in table. One person can hand out the ballots. Um, the other person can do the check-off of the actual check-in list or however, whatever breakdown you decide is going to work to make things most um, efficient and smooth as possible. You assist voters. Um, the election worker can be assigned to the ballot box, which is what the tabulator sits on and the ballot gets inserted into. So um, whoever's at the ballot box is there for the assistance of the voters if they have any problem. And your other tasks and duties are gonna count unused ballots when they get to the polling place in the morning. We need to take account of how many ballots are there. And anything basically that comes up by the warden uh, or, or as determined by the warden. Um, and the warden, of course, is your boss <laughs> for the day. Um, they're in charge of the polling place. They oversee everything. They handle all the inactive voters, any challenged voters, any provisional voters. And they make sure that all of the um, election laws are being followed. And the clerk is the official record keeper of all facts relating to the election. They record any unusual happenings. Um, they complete the election record, which actually sometimes that gets done by the warden, but it's just, it's a, a joint effort. The warden and the clerk, they work hand in hand and they read and record the ballot box register before and after the election. So they say, you know, zero, zero count on the tabulator. And at the close of polls, 350 voters, that kind of thing. 
Um, if you are scheduled to work the afternoon shifts, one to close, just we ask that you please arrive five or 10 minutes before your shift starts so that you're replacing someone. You can be logged in, be made aware of anything that you need to know, that sort of thing. And then the constable is the person who um, it's, 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 sometimes it's a police officer, sometimes it's somebody who's appointed specifically as a constable by the town, but they preserve the order of the election. So if there is ever a problem, um, you would let the warden know and the warden would let the constable know and together they would determine the best course of action and how to handle that problem. They also, at the end of the, at the end of um, voting at eight o'clock at night, they will stand at the end of the line if there's a line, so that nobody else sneaks in at the at the uh, tail end. So on election day, um, the constable arrives here at town hall at about five fifty five thirty in the morning, and we're here with smiling faces to greet them. Um, <laughs> they come in and they are given a tabulator. They're given the ballot box, which has all of your unvoted ballots that are blocked and sealed. And um, there, this is not all on here, this slide, but I'm just giving you an idea. And they pick up the election supply trunk and they pick up the warden's box, which has more supplies. So those things are transported to the polling place. Um, there's also an auto mark that's been set up prior to election day. So the tabulator again is, you know, what your ballots get put through. Um, the ballot box is what the tabulator sits on. And then the auto mark is the uh, voting assist terminal. So for those who are um, blind or um, can't, you know, do, for whatever circumstance feel that they can't mark their own ballot comfortably in a voting booth, they have the option to sit down at an auto mark. This machine marks the ballot after they've picked out their choices, and then you take the ballot from the auto mark, it spits it right back out after it marks it, and that gets put through the tabulator. So to determine, you know, people people sometimes don't realize it's there. So as a check-in, you know, an election worker, if you see somebody with a guide dog or with a cane, um, maybe they came in with somebody else, they're holding their arm, whatever the case may be, please feel free to say, we have an auto mark machine for your convenience. Would you like to use it? And hands, again, if you want, if you have questions, please raise your hand. We'll keep an eye on hands. Okay. All right. Okay, so um, before the polls open, for those there at six o'clock, we physically set up the polling place. So um, the Friday before, we're going to be setting up the polling place. Our, our setup crew will be going around to all the different locations, bringing tables, chairs, the auto mark, um, voting booths, and they're going to be setting up the polling place. We have schematics on how to set things up. And then when you get there on election morning at, at six o'clock, you're going to be, you know, arriving with the constable. They'll meet you there. And then everything gets taken out of all your trunks. So basically, um, you're posting information. So three sets of specimen ballots should be put up on the wall. A um, trifold poster, which includes the instructions, penalties, and voters' bill of rights should be put up on the wall, three of those as well. And one set of specimen ballots should be posted no higher than 48 inches from the ground for um, accessibility. And let's see, this whole process is open to the public, so the door should not be locked. So, um, you know, you're gonna go in at six o'clock, make sure it's 6.30, I'm sure the warden will know this, but the door should be opened so that people can watch. There may be observers, we never know. We haven't been contacted yet for this election. I'm sure there will be for November though. But um, the ballot box, when you're setting that up with the tabulator, and you you won't be doing it unless the warden asks you, so I'm just letting you know this is happening. Um, that's gonna be publicly open so that you can demonstrate that the ballot box is empty so that there are no ballots inside there because we're starting at zero count. We wanna make sure that it's zero all the way around. And then the warden's gonna ask somebody to test the auto mark machine. We'll take a ballot. Um, you could vote all three party ballots if you want, um, the Democrat, the Republican, the Libertarian. But once you vote the ballot, you have it marked, you write spoiled across it and then give it back to the warden and they will put it, uh, make note of it and put it in the clerk's book. Let's spoil it basically. That's just a test to make sure the auto mark is working properly for the day. Okay, let's see. 
So I had just mentioned, so there's three ballot styles um, for the three parties. So Democratic, Republican, and Libertarian. And you'll know by, uh, besides the words, but the headers are different colors. So orange, blue, and purple. And the state maintains that color, um, you know, um, what do you call it? Basically association with that party all the time. So it'll never flip around on you. So what's on each party's ballot? So right now we have Senator in Congress, Representative in Congress. So, you know, Warren is running again. Um, people, you know, uh, Counselor, Senator in General Court, Representative in General Court, Clerk of Courts, Register of Deeds, and Register of Probate. There's not a lot of contention with this election, not a lot of races. There is in the Republican side of things. There are three people going for Senator, but most other races are one person running. And in fact, the libertarian ballot has absolutely nobody on it. It's all write-ins. So now this is the big thing with the primary. So when a voter comes um, and to check in, this is where you guys, you're, you're our first line of defense, so to speak, make, making sure that people vote the way that they're supposed to vote. Because um, for primary, if someone's registered as a Democrat, they can only get a Democratic ballot. If they're registered as a Republican, they can only get a Republican ballot. If they're registered as a Libertarian, they can only get a Libertarian ballot. If they are registered as an unenrolled voter or in a political designation, they can choose whichever party ballot they want. Um, they will not switch to that party after the election's over. They stay in the party that they're currently registered in, but they can make their choice. The thing is, once they've made their choice and they walk away from you, they've been checked in on the voter list and they go to vote it, they cannot turn around and come back and say, I changed my mind. I don't want this ballot party. I want the other party. So they have to be sure. So, you know, that's why the specimen ballots are up on the wall. That's why you want to make sure people have taken a good look at the ballots and determine, okay, yeah, I definitely want that party ballot, not that party ballot. All right. Any questions on that? Yeah, I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead. Got to unmute yourself. No. There we go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you said um, this is somebody who's unenrolled. Mm -hmm. and you also said, or if they're in a designated party, what does that mean? So let me uh, grab my list here. Would be so political designation. So these are, so they're political designations. They're, um, parties, quote unquote, that didn't receive enough of the vote to become a main party. Like the so green. let me, yeah. like, like the green, so the green, actually the green rainbow and the libertarian are constantly flipping back and forth every four years, it seems. Um, right. They get enough voters and then they become a major party again, or they don't get it. So, but we have some, we have some political designations. We've got, um, oh, these are interesting. The conservative party, the natural law party, the new world council, the reform party, the We the People Party, the Constitution Party, time sizing, not downsizing. Um, we have a pizza party. We have a pirate party. So anyway, it's very interesting. It, it doesn't take much to form a party. Yeah, I'm not kidding. <laughs> and there's a couple of people registered in those, you know, political designations. Um, so that's that's what I'm talking about. They're they're you know they can vote. Um, they choose their party ballot out of the three main parties. Okay, thanks. Okay, okay, you're welcome. And just, yeah. And Mary, you have a question? And you'll have to. Yeah, I was just wondering if somebody is unenrolled and they come in and they say, I want, for example, the Republican ballot. Are we supposed to make a mark of that in the book that they did? Yes. Take, which ballot they took? Okay. Thank yes. You. Thank you for, yep, yep. Um, you do. The voter list is going to have nothing next to the people who have um, are registered and unenrolled or a political designation. There won't be any kind of, a, um, there won't be a D, an L or an R. So you're going to write down what party ballot they took. Yep, thank you. That's a great question. And yeah. Okay, and Christopher? You have to unmute yourself. There you yeah. go. Hi. Um, so if somebody does select a ballot and then change their mind and they want to change their um, and they can't change it, does that mean that they either vote with the ballot that we've given them or they don't vote at all? They have to, well, they, they have to make that choice. So if they've gotten a ballot. Do they still want to, you know, vote that ballot? If they don't, then they're done. Okay. They're done because they've already checked in. So once the process has started, they have to 
finish it through to the end. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Are we good on that? Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next slide. So two types of voters. Um, you're going to have the people that come up to the table and they're on your list. So we call those unimpeded. So basically there's nothing stopping them from voting nice and simply and, you know, moving on and voting. But then there are those who you're not going to find on your voter list. So when that happens, um, they're going to be they're going to be either on the inactive check-in list, who which the warden warden maintains, or they're going to be in the wrong precinct, or they're going to be in the wrong town, or they could even possibly be not registered. They thought they were, but they're not. Mm -hmm. So um, you'll send anybody that's not on your voter list straight to the warden. Okay. All right, and um, let me see here. Oh, yeah, there you go. So, Mary, there's your answer. Must mark the party ballot chosen next to the checked box. <laughs> I knew it was going to cover it somewhere. Probably these slides aren't in the right best order. But, um, yeah, so basically, you know, you're the first point of contact. You're going to ask the voter for the street name, street number, and then their name. And you look them up on the voter list. And sometimes it's a little hard to find because some of our addresses here in town are kind of, yeah, nodding heads here, are kind of weird. Um, but if there's ever a question, talk to your warden. If they can't figure it out, they'll give us a call. Okay. But again, so you're checking in, you're using a red pencil only, no black pens, only red. And the reason for this is that marks made by election officials need to stand out. Okay. When we get that voter list back, we're going to be scanning all of those people that came to vote on election day into the voter registration system to form a history for that voter. So it's important that you mark the ballot that they took because we cannot scan without that party choice. That's number one. And number two, when you're going through thousands of pages of material, if it's something written in black, it doesn't stand out black on black. So, you know, the red really helps us with our eyes in, in making sure we're scanning absolutely everybody that came out to vote on election day. Okay. So again, I think I've already mentioned this voter may need assistance and you're gonna offer them the auto mark. Um, voters can also ask for assistance from you. So if they come by themselves and they would rather have a human help them and not to sit at a machine, you know, you're more than welcome to offer that assistance and they can say yes or no, All right? Now, when they um, check in and you've, t you know, you've um, written down their party choice if, if you need to, the next thing you're going to do is offer a secrecy sleeve, which is going to be used by the voter to carry their voted ballot to the voting booth and from the voting booth to the tabulator, basically. Um, make sure you offer this to absolutely everybody. I think some of the comments from the last election, there were one or two comments that um, we received from voters saying that they were not offered a secrecy sleeve. Okay. Some people are very, you know, they don't want anybody to see what they're doing. So that secrecy sleeve will hide the ballot. It's just a cardboard fold thing and you stick the ballot in and you close it up. That's all it is. But, you know, it offers that voter some privacy. All right. So now the impeded voters, again, we started to touch on this. They're not on your voter list. You're gonna send them to the, um, to the ward and never turn people away just because they're not on your list because there are lots of other circumstances as to why that could be. So say you found a voter, they're on your list, but you see this. So ID required over on the left-hand side, do you see in the column it says ID and then that name is bolded? So the so everybody else set with that? Yeah. Um, so in this case, you see that and that person has to show you ID. So there's lots of reasons for that as well. So um, the Help America Vote Act started this whole thing off and basically um, voters that registered by mail but did not provide identification or voters whose ID couldn't be verified through the state system or who have never voted in Massachusetts are going to have ID requirement next to their name. And what you can do on the voter list is you can put a little note ID scene. That way we know when we're scanning, we can update that voter and make, make that change for them. Um, so, you know, you, you think to yourself, people that have to show ID may be inactive, but they're not. Active voters sometimes have to show ID because of those three 
um, conditions. Now, acceptable ID. Well, first of all, let's see. So they here's some acceptable ID, a driver's license, state issued ID card, recent utility bill, a rent receipt, a lease, copy of their voter registration affidavit, any other kind of printed ID which contains their name and address or a paycheck. So if they show you something from this list or anything that has their name and address, they've satisfied the ID requirement, make a note on the voter list, and then they can go ahead and vote. If for some reason they cannot show you ID, you would send them to the warden for further processing because the warden's going to now institute the challenged voter process. Um, so any questions on that? No, we're good. Okay. All right. So now we have people, some people come in, check in, go to vote, and then they come back to you because they messed up. So that's okay. They can spoil, they can actually vote three ballots. Um, if they spoil, if they, they screw up the first ballot, you're gonna spoil it. You're going to actually send them to the warden. The warden will, will help them out with this, issue another ballot. They'll make a note in the clerk book, spoil ballot, and then that voter can vote their second ballot. If they mess that one up, they can come back and do it another time, but that's it. Three, three strikes and you're out basically. Um, but basically they're gonna come back. They, they, they may go straight to the warden, they may go to you, but send them to the warden. The warden will help them out with give, giving them another ballot and making sure that that's documented. All right. And let's see. Oh, another thing of note, um, if they mess up that democratic ballot, they have to get another democratic ballot. They cannot change midstream. This is the same premise as, you know, they've checked in, they've chosen their party ballot, but they changed their mind. It doesn't matter how they're changing their mind. They can't change their mind because they spoiled the ballot. They can't change their mind because they changed their mind. They, they have to stick with their first choice. Now, the person who's assigned to the ballot box, um, basically the ballots can be inserted through that tabulator in any orientation. Once that ballot's accepted by the tabulator, there's gonna be a green check mark display. It says ballot cast. It's a good idea to have the voter just stand there and wait to see that green check mark. It gives them a little bit of um, you know, satisfaction knowing that, okay, my ballot's been cast, I'm good to go. Because if they don't wait and there's an issue, there'll be a message that comes up. Say they walk away and all of a sudden there's a message that comes up. That voter needs to deal with that message. But if they've walked away, now we are going to have to make the determination on how to proceed with that ballot. So there could be um, an overvote on their ballot. And if there is, then um, the voter has to choose to either receive another ballot or vote the ballot as marked. And we don't wanna be making choices for the voter, okay? So, so make sure that that green check mark comes up, make sure the voter waits and then, and then they can be on their way. But that tabulator will give you a message on the LCG screen as to what the issue is, if there is an issue. And then you just tell the voter, read, you know, let's read what, well, not let's read, tell the voter, read the screen, see what's going on, and then make a determination based on the issue. Okay. It pretty much walks them through it. And they just picking yeses and nos. It's very simple. And overvotes happen when it's a vote for one race and somebody votes for two. Um, so, you know, an overvoted ballot, again, they can receive another ballot or they can vote the ballot as marked. So if they vote the ballot as marked, say they overvoted in the uh, Senator race, it won't count the Senator race, but it'll count all of the other races that were voted properly on the ballot. So they're not wasting the whole ballot because they overvoted one race. They just decide, ah, I don't care about that race. Go ahead and cast my ballot. But, you know, if that's their choice. But if they want to get a new ballot, we've already talked on this. I'm not going to go. So we said we said that already. And the cast the overvoted ballot. We've talked about that. Okay. So this election, we are doing something a little different. Um, we started the we started doing this with the March election, but we didn't do the whole process. And what I'm talking about is advanced processing of ballots. So this is an option that the state has given us to deal with this vast amount of vote by mail ballots. Basically, the last election, if some of you were here then, um, we did advanced removal. So we took all the ballots out of all their envelopes. We checked them off the voter list. And then we sent you just the opened ballots at the precincts. And all you had to do was put them through the tabulator, which, you know, 
yeah, it was nice and easy for you guys, as opposed to receiving 1,500 ballots that you have to now sit down and open and check off a voter list and all that. So we're going to do that again, but we're going to take it one step further. We're doing advanced depositing. So we are going to actually take those open ballots and we are going to put them through a tabulator. Um, we're using our spare tabulators and we're using an entirely different set of memory cards than you're getting at the polling place. And we're going to store all of that information until 8 p.m. election night. We don't do anything with it, so we have no results. And then on election night, once the polls close at 8 o'clock, we'll take those um, memory cards and we'll start uploading the results from our advanced removal and processing session. And then when the tabulators come back from the polling place like they normally do, we take the memory cards out of those and we upload. So we're going to have multiple uploads of information. But what this means is, so we're doing it on... Tuesday the 27th and Thursday the 29th. Um, so any ballots that come in before the 29th will be processed. Any ballots from the 29th until election day are the ones you're going to see. So you'll, you will still get some early voted ballots and absentee ballots, there aren't many of those. Um, so you will still have to process process them at the polling place. So again, um, the, the warden being in charge will just tell you who's gonna do what. Um, and you know, direct you on the process for that. But say somebody comes in, you've got your voter list and somebody comes in and wants to vote um, in person on election day. So how do you know that they're actually eligible to do that? So if there's an X in the box next to the voter's name and I will show you the voter list again, let me see, whoops. Okay, so do you see in the bottom Susan sample there, her sample Susan, there's an X that indicates that we have received a ballot back from the voter. They can no longer vote. So if they show up in person on election day and you see an X at the check-in table, you say, I'm sorry, your ballot has already been cast. Okay. Um, let's go back over here. If the voter does not have an X, then they can vote in person on election day. They do not need to complete a form. They don't have to do anything because they have not cast their ballot. They're just going That's to proceed question. as usual. You have a question, Paul? I do, Susan, thank you. What happens if the uh, person, if the voter has already been, has already voted and they can test that? They show up at the, they show up at the voting? They can, you can send them to the town clerk's office because we're gonna have the records on who has uh, what ballot we've received because we've done that advanced processing and removal okay. or advanced removal and deposit. Um, we're going to have a voter list with a check mark. So, yeah. Okay. Have you had, have you had something like that happen? No. Okay. Good. <laughs> good. Well, you're just thinking about possibilities. I like that. Okay. All right. Yeah. No, send them to the clerk's office. Okay. All right. And, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for people showing up and there's an X in the box, they cannot vote. If there's no X in the box, they can vote. And I, um, again, you know, you're going to be given early voted ballots or absentee ballots. There are corresponding lists for these ballots. They're called EV20s and AV20s. And the warden's going to walk you through, you know, you, you process just the EVs first and then, then the AVs or vice versa. You don't mix them up. They have to be kept track of separately. Um, but all, all of this has to be done before the polls close at 8 p.m. And again, you're not going to get that many, so it won't be a big deal. Um, be, be aware of the 150-foot rule. So what can be done inside of the 150-foot rule and what cannot? Um, the warden will have in their warden's manual a map, so we know where that line is. And basically, if you see somebody walk up to the polling, to the, to the check-in table with any kind of campaign material, of any sort, whether it's on their body, whether they're holding it, and it has to pertain to this election. So if it's stuff for the presidential coming up, doesn't matter. It has to be for this election and who's on this ballot. They cannot, you have to tell them to remove it or hide it or what have you, but get rid of it because they cannot be influencing voters in any way. All right. They also cannot, anybody, uh, people cannot collect signatures on petitions or nomination papers within 150 feet. So if you see people, you know, standing around trying to do that, 
Uh, and, and again, you know, you're the, you're there busy checking people in, but if you have like a line of vision where you can see, it's great. You can call the warden over, then the warden will call the constable over and they'll, they'll deal with it. So, you, you know, just many eyes will make it easier. But um, yeah, if people are wearing shirts, you can ask them to take it off, turn it inside out, cover it up, whatever. But only for that election. If it's other elections, it doesn't matter. Observers, again, there may be observers, may not. Um, there's a guardrail. So basically tape on a floor, which is outside of the check-in area. Um, the warden will determine where that is. And observers need to stand behind the guardrail. They can't be interfering in any way with the check-in process. Um, but you do, when you're checking people in, you're going to repeat their name and address after they give it to you so that the observer can hear and they're going to be keeping their own little lists um, to help their campaigns. You know, they they have their their um, agendas as to why they're there. So they need to be able to hear who's there checking in. They cannot come over and look at the voting list. They have to be keeping their own voting lists. Um, we don't offer any electronic plugs for them if they're keeping electronic lists. They have to be isolated. Basically, self-sufficient is the word I'm looking for. Uh, and they can't be disorderly. They can't obstruct the voters. So if there's any issue, you know, if there are any observers and they're outside of the guardrail near your check-in table and you see any kind of anything going on, just let the warden know. And then eight o'clock again, the, the constable is going to announce the polls are officially closed. They'll stand behind anybody in line. And then the warden's going to let you know. Oh, Paul, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Susan. Um, can the observers video tape? Um, I have a whole thing on that. Oh, what was that? They can't. I don't think they can. I don't think they can. I'm going to, I'll let the warden know that though. They have, the warden has all of that information on the media. I can't think of it off the top of my head right now, but the warden gets all that information. They'll let you know. Okay. Okay. I'm making a note. Okay. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of do's and don'ts. So um, so closing out the polls. So basically, the warrants will let you know what needs to be done. But um, ballots need to be taken out of the ballot, you know, the ballot box. Um, there's going to be write-ins that have to be looked at, uh, counting. All kinds of things are happening. And the warden will let you know. You're going to count the check-in numbers on the check-in list, you're going to count unvoted ballots, taking down signs, all of that stuff. So um, yeah, basically, you know, just just take your cues from your warden. Every warden's different as, as to who they want doing what. And But once everything is done, then everything will get packed up and transported back to town hall by the constable. So basically everything that came in the morning is going to go at night. So the election supply trunk, the warden's supply trunk, um, the voted ballots, which are gonna be sealed, just the voted ballots and um, the tabulator. But we will, we tend to have people run around and pick up the tabulator. So that'll go before the constable brings things back. But you leave in the polling place, the auto mark, because our, our team will be picking that up, all the voting booths, all the tables and chairs. Okay. And that's it. We just thank you so much for helping this process and being a part of it, um, we do appreciate it. We have some really great election workers that love doing this and, and we are, we're very lucky to have you. Uh, Paul, another question? Yeah? Yes, I do. I'm can gonna just voter. unshare. Hold on yeah. one second, so I can get it on the screen. Here we go, okay. Okay, can the voter videotape or record anything as they walk in? That's part of the whole media. I've got a whole whole page thing on media what, pe what the people can do with media, who can do what with media. So, yeah, yeah. So the has, I give that to the warden. It has happened. Oh, I know. And I think some of it is allowed because a voter can a voter can film, look at them voting. It's their own ballot, you know. Um, but, yeah, there's a fine line between things. And it's not really clear because this is from the Secretary of State. They're the ones offering mm -hmm. this guidance. Um, I don't have that in front of me. I would read it to you if I did. But the warden will get this information. One other, one other follow up. I typically get assigned to the regional high school. Yeah. Okay. And I had to park in Hadley to get to uh, come to the uh, 
kidding. I'm like, what? <laughs> park, park, parking spaces at the high school are a premium. Uh, is our school is the school uh, open at that time? I don't think it's open. It's not open on election day. I know for November, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be open in September either. I'm still talking to the schools, having a little bit of a, you know, communication issue with the schools right now. There's a lot of things going on. So we're still ironing all this stuff out. But I know you have this side. If you're looking at the school to the left is your entry at the high school. And then you've got the parking lot right to the left of that. That's where you guys can park. But you can also park in the main body parking lot there's tons of parking there and just walk across the street i mean i've crossed the you know not the street but you know what i mean yeah and pam i thought i saw your hand up yes i have a question can you hear me okay i can um this is something that we talked about at a previous training i just don't remember what we said is about it that if so, it, it has to do with taking somebody says i'll take a they're they're an, an unenrolled and they say well i'll take a democratic ballot and then they come back and they say, I really wanted the Republican ballot, that they can always write in a candidate, right? Oh, they can always write it in, but this is and a so state election. Could, yeah, so they could have the wrong party and still write in the candidate that they want. And of course they can. Ballot, right? they, they can, but the question is, will it be counted? Hmm. It's not going to be counted. Oh, really? Ultimately because that candidate's in the wrong party. Okay, that was what I didn't remember. So, yeah. okay, so they can do that, but it, it won't yeah. be anything. No, no, Got but it. they can do that, but yeah. Okay. All right, I see hands, so Marta? Yes, good morning. Um, Regarding the the ballots, do they have a, a sample ballot online? Yes, yeah, okay. it's on, we always post them on our website. Okay, you say the if a person who's enrolled, you have to explain it before you hand out the ballot. So let's say I'm, I'm going to explain it to you. Do I need another worker who uh, be a witness of what I'm explaining to them so they don't think that I'm giving a, um, uh, uh, guiding the person to vote for the party of my preference? So what do you mean by explaining? Okay, um, you you mentioned that people who are on a roll, mm -hmm. before you gave it the ballot, you had to explain which party they had to choose, correct? Well, you don't need to explain. You just tell them their choices. Just say, you know, would you like a Democratic ballot, a Republican, or a Libertarian? And that's it. Okay, but we, as a worker, we don't need somebody to watch us explaining that to the to the person? Oh, no, you're just giving them choice, you know? You're just going to ask them, which party ballot would you like to vote? And then they say, what are the parties? And then you can point them to the specimen ballots on the wall. Okay. Which, okay. And then they can see and then see who's running under which party. That would be the best thing because then they can make their choice based on having seen what's on the ballot. Okay. Okay. Regarding people collecting signatures outside the poll. Yeah. Um, you say that we had to let the warder know about it. Yes, if you oh. see someone, let the warden know because the warden will send the constable out to make that person move outside of the 150 foot line. Oh, they don't send the police immediately, you know. No, the, the constable is the police at the polls. Got it. Um, uh, okay, that will be it. Okay. Oh, no, one more thing. Yeah. I, I encountered an issue of something regarding my housing, regarding W2 forms. Um, are we going to start getting W-2 forms on uh, the payments that we receive for working for the polls? Um, they sent them out this year, I believe, but it was, uh, they had an issue this year over in accounting because I don't think they meant to send them out and it confused a lot of people. So mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to be sending them out next year unless you made over $600. I believe that's the cutoff or the the, the cap. If you made more, but you won't, you won't. As an election worker, you're not going to make yeah. So okay. I don't think you're going to get them. That's an accounting question. If you want it, you can call accounting and make sure. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Tari. Is it Tari? It's Terry. Terry. Like Terry. Terry. I'm like, oh, that's an interesting spelling. Okay. This Hi. Is the first time and I'm really excited. But I had a question. When do we as poll workers get to vote? 
Well, <laughs> if you're working, so if you're a resident of Hammers, you know, you can come in and vote during early voting, which starts Saturday, this Saturday, and okay. then it goes all week next week, but you can vote by mail. And if you're only working a half a day, I mean, we polls open at seven in the morning and they're open until eight o'clock at night. Okay. So oh, there you go. Lots of choices. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. All right. Audrey. Hi. Um, thank you very much. This has been very helpful. I'm also new. Uh, just want to jump back to media for a second. You said it's okay for people to film, but only themselves, right? You can't film anybody else. Don't quote me on that. Um, I've got, a, a, like I said, I've got an entire um, directive from the Secretary of State's office on the do's and don'ts of that, which the warden will get. Uh, so that might be good, you know, in your precinct, ask the warden and they can read it to you because I will give them all of that before election day. Thank you. Okay. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. And is that Deb? Who I'm trying to think who is that? Is that Fred and Deb? No. Who is that? Hand up. Husband, wife team there. What are your names? Yeah, go ahead. Except you're not, you're muted. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, uh, no, I did unmute. Yeah, this is, uh, Pete and Sophie. Uh, Pete Daniel and Sophie, okay. And Susan. Uh, so you, you had said that if a person doesn't, uh, let, if, if they've sent in their mail-in ballot late, and therefore we, we don't, we, we we don't know that, obviously, and we give them a ballot. So I assume you've got some process after the after the voting is over to make sure that there's not a double count. So yeah, I'm not sure about the late, but if somebody comes in person to vote, yeah. if there's an X in the box, they've already voted. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm if there is no if there is no X in the box. Yep. But they actually voted late, but you just don't have the, you just don't have the record of that coming in. Oh no, no, no. No, no. Um, that voter list gets printed the weekend before the election. No, there's checks and balances. They're going to be on there or they're not. Oh, so and then after yeah, and then afterwards, no, there's multiple checks and balances. They nobody votes twice. <laughs> yeah. Right. There's all these other things going on behind the scenes that we have to do. So um yeah, if they're voting on election day, that's it. They voted, and there's no more counting. Polls close at eight o'clock, and there's no more counting. Okay. Thank okay. You. Okay. You're welcome. And does anybody else have any other questions? Fred? No, Deb. Is that Deb? That's Deb. You got to unmute yourself. There we are. Okay. Last um, time, you emphasized very strongly that the state was saying that there can be no no political conversation at all. And okay. this time you just said related to the current election is- um, well, No, that's that's campaign is, finance material. No, but just um, Amherst is a very political town. So people might want to talk about the November election. Yeah, but, a, when you're, a, but none, correct? Yeah, so a couple of things. So, Basically, so two separate things. So when you're sitting there working as an election worker, you should not be discussing politics, period. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Not no, while no. you're working. But people coming up to you to check in to vote, they also should not have any kind of campaign materials that pertain to the current election visible. So you need to ask them to remove it or put it away, that sort of thing. So these are two okay. separate things. Yeah. And then I had mentioned that if you want to talk politics, you know, and you're going to take a lunch break or whatever, um, okay. you leave you leave the building and you go outside and, and keep it away from the happenings of the voting. That's fine. That's fine. Because you're out of earshot, basically. You know, I can't we can't. It's freedom of speech. We can't, you know, but but while you're sitting in that polling place and you're working and you're on duty, you do not discuss politics. OK, good. OK, OK. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. All right. Looks like everybody is all settled with questions. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's nice to meet some of you. I mean, I know it's a fa it's not in person, but um, I see faces. Don't don't ask me to remember names. <laughs> not good with that. It's nice when you come into the office because then we can put a face to a name and talk to people. You know. But hopefully, we'll see you soon. And if there's any questions, just email us. We're happy to answer. 
and I just wish you all well on election day. It's going to be a quiet election, I think, but um, it's a good, you know, for the new, for you who are new, it's, it's a good one to start with because it gives you a flavor of what's, what it's like and all the different processes. So uh, oh, one quick question. Yeah, Eric. Um, so folks who are on the backup list. Yes. When, when do they typically, you know, I know you probably can't govern all of this, but you know, is it typically you're notifying people, oh, we need your help um, the day of, the, the day, the night before? It's <laughs> true. Lot. We don't know because it, you know, we'll be Somebody's like, sick, oh, yeah. exactly. We'll be like, oh, great. We're all staffed. And then the day before somebody says, I got COVID, you know, mm -hmm. and this happens every election. And so we'll be just calling as we need to. So I know mm -hmm. we never know. I wish we did, but yeah. And it's hard too, because, you know, as a person who says, yeah, I can be a backup. Now you're putting your life on hold because you don't know when you're going to get a phone call. We understand that. It's just nature of elections, unfortunately. Okay. But yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Well, if that's all the questions, um, I guess we'll call it a wrap and uh, stop recording, right? Thank you, Susan. Okay. You're welcome. You're welcome. It's nice to see you all and enjoy this day, the beautiful weather. This is nice. Thank all you. right. Okay. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>